All right, it's five o'clock, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the first meeting of the 21-22 Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, we'll begin by taking a roll. Elder Person Mitchell is here. Uh, Felicky Pneski. Do we have anybody online? Uh, Elder Person Perel? Here. Elder Person Ackley? Here. Elder Person Felby? Here. All right, we have four present. Uh, if you'll all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then since this is our first meeting of the year, let's move on to 1.4, the introductions of committee members and staff. We'll just go around the room if you want to start with Barb on the end. Person Betty Ackley, Alder Person for District 4. Uh, I'm Trey Mitchell, committee chairman, Alder Person District 9. Todd Wolf, City Administrator. Grazie per Vella, Albert for District 7. I'm Chad Pelishek, the City Planning and Development Director. Daniela Pardipillo, Interim Finance Director. Krista Mogalski, Police Chief. David Bebel, Director of Public Works. Vicki Schneider, Director of Human Resources. Eric Bushman, Director of Information Technology. Chuck Adams, the attorney. And Roberta Fulicki Paneski, Alderperson District 2. All right, thank you. Uh, then we'll move on to item 2.1, approval of the minutes. Uh, any I'll take a motion. We have a motion from Alder Person Felby and a second from Alder Person Ackley. And is there any discussion? Uh, seeing none, all of those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. We're moving on to item 3.1. I wrote number 72122, submitting a petition, notice, and list of tax liens of Sheboygan County being foreclosed in the matter of the foreclosure of tax liens under Wisconsin Statute 75-521 by Sheboygan County list of tax liens for 2014, 15, 16, and 17. Chuck, or who would like to take this one? So Sheboygan County um, forecloses on tax liens within the county and the properties that are listed in the highlighted in the document that's attached to this uh, agreement are the properties that they're moving forward with for in rem tax foreclosure uh, for property tax delinquencies. Um, typically what happens after they, some of them they settle before they get to that uh, foreclosure, but when the judge grants it, uh, then you'll see these properties come on the market. The reason we're being Notified is sometimes we have uh, special assessments against these properties. Other times we might have uh, loans against these properties from previous housing rehab um, things. So it's just to put us on notice that these are the ones they're moving forward with. Anybody have action on this? Proper action would be to receive and file. Okay. In that case, I'll take a motion to that effect. I think we need the first motion. Okay, I'll make the motion. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Elder Kelby, please. My question, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I would need to know is the reason we're doing 14, 15, 16, and 17, 
um, because the courts were backed up because of the COVID, or is this normal that we usually do that many years clumped together? First of all, we're not doing that. The county is doing it. The county okay. treasurer's office is the person that's filed the action. Um, and it's basically, I would say it's probably related to the timing on their end. I know they were a number of years behind uh, prior to that. Um, so I think they're just catching up and is the ones that they have delinquency, you have to have three years or more of back taxes before they can move through the foreclosure process. So I'm guessing that's why it's, um, they're just, it's based on the three years of delinquency and them trying to catch up on the foreclosures. But this is really a county treasurer's action. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, If there's no other questions, uh, we'll vote on the motion. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Uh, moving on to item 3.2, resolution 202-2021, uh, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a cancellation agreement and mutual release in order to terminate the listing contract with CBRE, Inc., regarding South Point Enterprise. I can take that one, Chair. So this is a document that terminates the contract with the city and CBRE Inc. So last, uh, a year ago, two years ago in January of 2019, a contract was executed with a Milwaukee firm to do the marketing um, and selling of lots in our new business center. Um, it has, given that they're in Milwaukee at the time, it, the thought was is that they would give us leads to opportunities coming out of the Milwaukee market, but uh, that did not was not the case, and uh, we got very little leads out of the firm. So um, we actually were in discussions with them about um, the contract and trying to give us information on a more timely basis as to who they're reaching out to, and it was a communication struggle between the two organizations. So they came forward with a termination agreement because some of the staff that was originally gonna be working on this on their end had taken other jobs and they were having a staffing issue so they are, they were recommending canceling the agreement. Um, the city staff is in support of it. I think we can do just as good a job at the local level, especially with our partners at the Economic Development Corporation and city staff on moving forward um, without a contract. Now, that does still give local brokers an opportunity that if they did get a lead, um, we would pay them a commission because we do have a policy in place for that, but we will not have to pay out any kind of commission to an entity that's not really involved in the process. Thank you, Chair. I just, I just wanted to uh, ex expand a little bit more on, on the discussion that uh, Director Pelichek uh, talked about. Uh, last year, after I became city administrator, uh, Chad and I did call them and kind of put them on the spot because of the fact that there hasn't been any activity. And we were asking them for their plans and steps moving forward. And that's when they were basically telling us, you know, the, about COVID and things like that. And then we recently followed up again. And that's when they told us that they were stepping down from the contract. So we were very pleased to hear that because we didn't feel it was fair that in the contract if the city actually had had some leads that they would still get their commission above and beyond that so this is actually a good thing uh, we have some great resources uh, like the SEDC and um, to me this is a, uh, a good thing that it's kind of a gift versus waiting for the contract to to fully mature so thank you sounds mutually beneficial to me do we have any questions from the committee I move to accept the recommendation. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? second? And we have a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye and the ayes have it. Uh, moving on to item 3.3, uh, resolution number four, 2021, 
a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to take three actions related to the new HVAC control system at Mead Public Library. One, enter into an agreement with Manabek Mechanical LLC. Two, draw funds pursuant to the existing contract with Quality Control Systems Incorporated. <clears throat> and three, make a necessary budget adjustment and appropriation in the 2021 budget. And who would like this one? Okay. What that is, is we had a four year approved CIP project. We did all our HVAC in the last four years. So all the air conditioning, heating's all replaced. And then we found that the old controls weren't working very well with the new HVAC system. So what we did is we went out for bids and we had about six to $8,000 a year that we needed to replace the HVAC each year. What happened is the first two years, we actually re-put out to bid and it ended up being about half the cost. So what we're doing is asking that I can do year three and four this year and finish the control project, seeing as we've had a savings of 60,000 over the last two years. And this will also save about 54,000 that can be redistributed to CIP next year. Thank you. And do we have any questions from the committee? If not, I'll take a motion at this time. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? All right. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Moving on to item 3.4, uh, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into the contracts with Enterprise FM Trust and Enterprise Fleet Management Incorporated for the lease of vehicles, the disposal of vehicles, and the maintenance of vehicles, and authorizing the city administrator to administer the lease program to the extent funds are appropriated. Who would like this one? Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is basically just um, the review of the contract. Uh, the attorney's office has gone through it with a fine tooth comb and they've been working with um, Enterprise Legal. So this program, as soon as uh, this contract is approved, we'll be able to start implementing it and get, get things on order uh, yet this month. So this is to basically take our, our 60 to 70 light light use vehicles or uh, cars and trucks, mainly from DPW, and get this uh, turned into a, a rotational program like we presented earlier in the year. So we, we recommend this highly, and if there's additional questions, um, Director Beeble can also answer some of them. Do we have any questions from the committee? I have, I have a comment, Alderperson Feliki Paneski. I, I think this is a, a great program and the sooner we can get it moving, the better off our financial picture will be. And hopefully it will work as intended and uh, moving forward, I just think it's a great idea. So I will move that we accept the uh, resolution. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And further discussion, other person, Perella? Since I was not here um, when this was discussed, it's just, just for, the, for my education or for our education. What does the 250,000 um, lease covers? Is that every year for, uh, for how long? David, do you want me to take this or? Okay. Um, what what the two hundred fifty seven thousand ish dollars is is basically we're taking our old fleet of between sixty to seventy vehicles, and some some of them are upwards of twenty years old, and it's basically one ton and less uh, from DPW, 
what is going to happen is Enterprise will uh, sell these vehicles on the market, take the value of those vehicles, and we're going to turn it into a fund. And then we're going to replace all of these vehicles with brand new vehicles, um, outfitted according to what, what we need. And then every two to five years, these vehicles will be rotated back in and sold and replaced again. And the way that the program works, the, the revenues that are developed from the sale of the, of, the, of the vehicles will continuously fund the replenishment of the vehicles. So instead of the city of Sheboygan borrowing money uh, on a geo, on geo debt, general obligation debt, which is a 10 year loan, we'll be, we will not be borrowing money for vehicles anymore. We'll actually be able to have a fund that will be self-sufficient year over year. And then that allows us to use our, our geo debt for capital improvements versus vehicles. Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, I believe we already have our motions, so I'll ask at this time. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, and the motion passes. And then, if it's okay with the committee, if we take item 3.6 and move it to the end, since the presentation will probably be a little longer. You need 3.5 first. We do. Yeah, at the very bottom. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> but before that, item 3.5, direct referral resolution 72122, a resolution authorizing the continuation of the self insured workers' compensation program. I'm guessing, but would you like to take this? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So this is a requirement uh, from the Department of Workforce Development that we uh, authorize or have council authorize the renewal of our workers' compensation insurance for a self-insured entity. Um, this was last renewed uh, in 2018. So um, every three years, this is a requirement to go through for council approval. And then any questions from the committee? I just had uh, one high level generalized question then, just what is the major benefit to the city of having the self-insured program versus using an independent provider? So there is a, about a 10 to 15 percent uh, uh, savings in cost if we are as a self-insured entity to be able to provide the insurance on our own. We work with CIVMIC. Uh, which is our li liability carrier, and they are uh, they assist us with the investigations of any workers' comp claims. Uh, but as far as our ability to save and to be able to mitigate any other additional costs as far as administration, we're able to take that on ourselves. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Uh, seeing none, we'll need a motion. Make a motion. Second. All right. Second. In that case, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Now, if it's okay with the committee, I'd like to move 3.6 down to the end. And seeing no objections, we will move on to item 4.1, which is uh, an item for discussion only. The City Development Department's 2022-2026 Capital Improvement Program requests with the Director of Planning and Development, Chad Palaszczuk. Thank you, Chair. So the these are uh, capital improvement requests that had gone to the Capital Improvements Commission and will be coming back to the full council in the coming weeks. Um, from the Department of City Development. Um, you can see on the attached spreadsheet that there's a number of projects, and I think the only project that is going to affect the 2022 capital improvement uh, project is the potential purchase of railroad right-of-way. We've talked about this project numerous times. This is the right-of-way 
adjacent to South Business Drive from Pennsylvania down to Mead Avenue and then along Indiana Avenue. We've been in discussions for two or three years with the railroad. Um, hopefully we're gonna get to an acceptable uh, amount of money. The railroad believes that the property is worth 1.2 and the city believes it's worth eight, 875,000. So we've got a little bit of a difference that we're negotiating, but um, we've budgeted at 875, um, which we agree is probably no more than what we would wanna pay for that. Um, so we'll see if we can get there and if we can, we would look for a closing sometime in 2022 and use capital improvement dollars to do so. All right. And do we have any questions from the committee? All right, and this one was for discussion only, so we do not need a motion, is that correct? That is correct. All right, then we will move on to item 4.2, uh, Information Technology and Cable TV Departments 2022-2026 through 2026 Capital Improvements Program Requests with the Director of Information Technology, uh, Eric Bushman. Thank you, Chair. We'll start with Cable TV. Uh, in 2022 for Cable TV, we have requested $25,000 for a new TriCaster. Um, that equipment is uh, nearing its uh, at a place, so it will need to be replaced next year. The next capital for the cable TV uh, will be in 2025, and uh, we'll be looking to replace the broadcast truck uh, during that year. Are there any questions on cable TV? If not, I will move on to IT. Any questions? I have a question. How, how old is the current uh, cable TV production truck? Mm, I, 2003. Horse and buggy. <laughs> Thank course, you. You're welcome. Okay, it looks like we're good to move on. Now okay, to move, moving on to information technology. So within the information technology, our core ERP package is a Windows-based system, which we've been on for a few years now. We still have a IBMI, or many people refer to it as an AS400, which runs a number of legacy applications. And our goal over the next few years is to retire that hardware platform and move everything to a Windows or cloud-based solution. So in 2022, 3, 4, and 5, you will see IBM I retirement software acquisitions. That is capital to support purchasing additional software to retire those legacy applications. Then in 2026, um, we'll see that the infrastructure upgrades that we did in 2018 and 19 to support the new city hall and the wastewater treatment Will, will start to need to be upgraded again. So that's what those monies are for. Any questions? Any questions from the committee? Thank you. All right, if not, thank you, Eric. Then we will jump back up to item 3.6, uh, direct referral number, uh, RO number 102122, submitting the internal controls assessment City of Sheboygan Benefits Administration Assessment dated April 19th, 2021, which was prepared by Chris Clifton Larson Allen, LLP, for CLA. And I will hand it off to our HR Director and City Administrator. Thank you, everyone. Can you hear me well enough with my mask? Yes, okay, awesome. Scott, can you, okay, thank you. Okay, for those who have been new to council, I wanted to just give an update on uh, some history that we've gone through as a department in the last year. Uh, is that not showing up? Okay. All right, okay. My screens weren't matching, so I apologize. So uh, in, 
late 2019, uh, early 2020, Clifton Larson Allen performed an operational and organizational assessment on, for the city of Sheboygan for finance and human resources. And that uh, presentation was given to council in May of 2020. Uh, one of their identified needs was that the human resources team needs sound, present, and ongoing leadership. And that was uh, part of the, the reason that um, I came into the department. So I'm going to present to you a timeline of events that has happened since, um, since, there we go, um, since January of 2020. So when, when Clifton Larson Allen or CLA presented its report, uh, there were a, a number of challenges that the, both departments were facing. Uh, as a timeline also of how the changes affected the personnel in both departments, I wanna share with you the comings and goings of the various departments so that you understand all the changes and ramifications that both departments have had. So Tara Dewey uh, came on board in January of 2020 as the deputy director of finance. Um, in February, the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations resigned at the end of that month. Uh, I came on board as an interim director in March of that same year. And the day after I started, Governor Tony Evers had declared a state of emergency regarding COVID. And COVID has been a tremendous burden on an already difficult year for our departments. Um, oops. Then uh, in April of 2020, Daryl Hoffland, as our city administrator, announced his retirement. I was approved then as the director of human resources and labor relations in May by the council. Uh, in July, we had Daryl Hoffland's last day as the city administrator. And then on July 7th, uh, Todd Wolf took over as the uh, city administrator. His first day was July 7th. Oops. I don't know why this isn't matching, sorry, sorry, I apologize for that. Um, so within the first week of Todd taking over uh, as the city administrator, the HR department, knowing that it had challenges, we went right into strategic planning with the team. Uh, we had a lot of different changes and a lot of different goals for the department. Uh, we did strategic planning, as I just said, we've had the retirement of various personnel in the, uh, per in the finance department. Uh, we were adjusting some of the responsibilities. We had some shared positions that we wanted to clarify. Um, the auditor analyst position had been changed to be noted as an accountant too. We created a new position of an administrative services clerk too, and that position was hired again in July. And we had a admin services clerk one who had been released in about the same time frame. We also noted that there were concerns within the payroll processing system that we had uh, included Baycor as our, uh, as a firm to be a consultant to look at those processes and determine what could we do to improve that. And with that, we looked at our PCM process, which is how we acknowledge changes that uh, affect any employee and to create those processes within Munis. So we were um, doing a lot of the things that we needed to do through those assessments and with city administrator Todd Wolf's support. This is really weird. Um, again, we had some changes in our personnel department, our HR generalist position, we, that person was released at the beginning of August. We brought on Jessica Huss as an accountant three in the department for the finance department Denise Clark came in as a new generalist in October, as well as Chris Trecker as the admin services clerk one. In November, Michael Herman was brought on board as an accountant one. Uh, the finance director resigned mid-November and Daniel Tainer Partipolo was brought on board as the interim finance director. In December, the middle of December, our benefits administrator was suspended with pay and by the end of the month, we had released her from her position. So in January of 2021, it was really challenging for our department. Um, it was a very difficult transition. I do want to commend Sandy Halverson, our payroll administrator for uh, just her outstanding leadership and that she helped us navigate all the things that we didn't know 
or needed to know as far as reporting or payroll and all of those, those pieces. So she was incredibly important to the successful transition of our team through those months. Uh, in February, our accountant too uh, retired. And in March, CLA was chosen uh, to do this benefits administrative audit. And we were in the discovery mode in January of 2021 uh, after the benefits administrator was released that we were discovering other items that were addressed in the uh, audit. In um, April of this year, we continue to still have staffing changes that our administrative services clerk one was released. We are uh, in the process of recruiting for that position. And Christina Luptow, who was the clerk two in the HR department was promoted into the finance department. And so she will be uh, an accountant too in that department and is very capable and we're very excited about that. Uh, Tara Dewey as the deputy director just announced her resignation and she will be leaving the, the city as of uh, next Friday, May 21st. Uh, we have anticipated start dates for the finance director, the HR generalist and the HR administrative assistant and we are excited to have a new team that we feel very strongly about that we feel is, is good. Okay, um, so what I would like to do at this point is to, that was a lot of the timeline of all the changes and we've gone through a tremendous amount of change in the, de in the two departments, both HR and finance. Um, what I wanted to be very clear about, and it's a very difficult uh, report to share with you, the CLA audit, that both Administrator Wolf has been extremely supportive and myself, we're on the same page about how we want to approach this. And when we found the discrepancies in the department and in some of the practices, that we were the, the team that came forward to say that we wanted to have an audit done to make sure that we weren't missing anything, that we wanted to have the complete picture. So what was discovered was our short-term and long-term disability insurance practices were, um, were, in, were being uh, administered inappropriately. And this was the triggering event. This was the event that caused um, issues in mid-December for us as a team. We discovered that the spousal surcharge waivers, which helped support, uh, again, a cost savings to the city, uh, were not done appropriately. There were inappropriate payments in the past to retirees. There were manual overrides of prescription drug benefits. The administrative of, administration of short-term disability benefits was not handled appropriately. There are questions about whether there were purchases using chamber bucks, or cash benefits, gift cards, and, and such things. The police and fire sick bank management is also a question of concern for the city. And we have had and have um, are mitigating the inconsistent application of policies and, pr and procedures and practices. So with all of that, and there's a lot, there's a lot in the report uh, again, as I said, it's a very difficult report to share with you, but I want to assure you and Administrator Wolf will be able to say as well that we are on the same page regarding transparency and the expectations of what is appropriate and what is expected going forward. Uh, we wanted to present this audit to you so that you can be assured that we are trying and are being as transparent as possible with the difficult news and, and uh, items that we discovered. Uh, we have created an immediate separation of duties, which was noted in the report, with Administrator Wolf becoming the comptroller with council approval. Uh, banking controls are being clarified and implemented within the finance department between the deputy director and the city administrator. We are separating the payroll function and access from human resources based on our software program that we use Munis so that there's going to be different permissions and different access points so that there cannot be any question about who has access and the ability to do what. Um, Sandy Halverson, our payroll administrator, now reports directly to the city, uh, to the city administrator. 
Um, and we are working on a payroll project with Baycor, which is to, again to separate completely the responsibilities from the payroll process from the human resource process and function. Our, our insurance brokers, our USI, they have been extremely helpful to us through this process. Our brokers have been very helpful in giving advice and in assisting us with uh, making sure that we have policies in place to mitigate any future overrides or anything else that could put the city at risk as a self-insured uh, agency. Our employee handbook is in its final stages of a total rewrite to be compliant and to have a clear expectations for all employees. A code of conduct will be embedded in the new handbook, which will be required for all employees to sign off and understand. We will institute a whistleblower program. We're working with CIVMIC right now, again, our liability insurance carrier to make sure that those pieces are in place. Basically, we've had 100% turnover of the Human Resources Department since January of 2020. And my thought and my expectation is that we are putting in place a really strong, a really good team so that you can be assured that these, this will never happen again. Uh, checks and balances are being implemented between the Human Resources and Finance Departments. And then the implementation and utilization of MUNIS, which is again our software ERP system, for benefits administration will be expected. This was again another flaw in that it could allow um, information to be circumvented without an audit trail using in the, in the MUNIS software system. So I'm gonna end with our mission. We had a strategic planning day with the team in March of this year as well. And as a team, we created a mission statement for ourselves. And I think it's very important for, um, for you as council members to understand that we are looking at this as something that is very serious, that we know that we need to earn trust back. And so as a team, that we want to be those trusted professionals and that we will serve as a strategic and operational partner this is something that the city has needed and this is something that the city is going to need in the future and we are very uh, dedicated and proud to be able to serve in that way. Thank you, Vicki. I just wanted to add a few comments and we, do, we also have Ray Emery on, the, on, the, on this online if anybody has additional questions. Ray is from uh, CLA. But I wanted to just kind of point out, as Vicki had said, We've, we've had a lot of change, and change is good, but we, we are in, in control. We know what's going on. We brought this forward. We are being transparent. We have nothing to hide. We want to fix things, and you can only fix them as you find them. But we have good people. These are problems that have been going on for years and years and years and decades. So these aren't things that people necessarily see as a problem when you're doing it every day. Right When you're doing something every day, you don't really look at the, the actual process. We've broken it down and we're looking at it and saying, why are we doing this? And one, of my, one, one thing I really don't like is when somebody says, well, I don't know, we've always done it this way. That's not acceptable. So please understand, you know, in any company, things happen, things do go sideways. We are addressing them as we find them. And a lot of it's just updating things, having proper policies, having separation of duties, having auditing that's actually audited with documentation showing what was audited. You can't say you audit and have no proof. So we have good people and we're gonna continue to go from department to department and check things and audit things and make changes. But please have faith that we have the right people in place and that we're gonna continue to, to grow and improve things. Ray, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, it was great recap. Uh, Vicki did a nice job. Um, a lot going on there over the timeline. Um, I would just say this, that um, 
the bad things that happen, I would, I would, I would say it's tone at the top, but I think all the things that, that Vicki just laid out is how do you get the tone at the top where it should be? Um, very impressed with both Vicki and Todd to, um, to, I'll say, step up to the plate, have this audit done, um, open, open it all up um, and be very transparent about it. And I think some of the things that Vicki laid out will help to shore up the tone at the top. And, you know, these are, um, you know, you know, the whistleblower, the hot, you know, the new code of conduct, all of those things are going to go a long way to, to bolstering your tone at the top. And I think you're on the right track. And um, again, there were some bad things that were going on and, and those bad things, um, people are going to get the message with the new tone at the top. And, and obviously some of the uh, turnover is, um, made that point clear. So um, I applaud everything that this these two are doing and um, I think it's it all steps in the right direction. So thank you for letting me um, chat about this. Thank you, Ray. Any questions from the committee? I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Roberta. Um, you, you talked about rebuilding the trust and I, I appreciate that. I, I would also like to focus that there's rebuilding internal trust with our employees as well as rebuilding trust with the public. And I think both of those need very careful attention. And um, I remember when I heard the annual report from your office, Vicki, I thought, oh my gosh, how could you do all of that in one year? And I appreciate the 100% turnover in a year. Um, and I, I hope that everyone has gotten the message that moving forward, there are things that won't be tolerated. And then I have two questions. Um, is there been any thought of remediation for anything that shortfall, shortcoming? Um, you know, what, what kind of steps are we taking for any of that? Or is it line in the sand and we're moving forward? Uh, we have looked at all of that, and uh, to use your example, a line in the sand. We're we're moving forward um, with the with 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 what we have found. There's there's no reason to to go back and and address those issues. We're we're moving forward in a positive way, putting in our policies, procedures, and updating everything. And then training will be put into place. Uh, again, we're implementing a lot of uh, technology improvements. So that also forces certain approval processes, processes and separation of duties. So uh, we are moving forward. Thank you. Any additional questions from the committee? Uh, other person, Varela. I want to thank uh, Vicky and Todd for the uh, sensible um, summary. Um, I'm really, really impressed by the many changes. And so I applaud that you went through all these changes in such a short time and uh, with so many challenges. I, I, I'm really um, uh, shocked by that. And I, I didn't know, and, and, and I really appreciate your work on this. Um, just two questions. One is, if you can summarize for us again, in two sentences, the root causes. And second, are there, is there plan in your new policies and procedures for regular internal and, or, and external audits? So I think the root cause is that there were, there were that the appropriate uh, policies or procedures or oversight in place that uh, demanded audits or review um, that required that. There was 
uh, a sense of, uh, I will use the word negligence in the fact that what was okay to go ahead and no one was complaining, we can go ahead and just let things go as they, as they were. But it is clearly a lack of policy, a lack of procedure, a lack, lack of checks and balances that caused that. Um, going forward, uh, having the right people in the right leadership roles is going to go uh, a long way to make sure that this never does happen again. We are working diligently with uh, the finance department as the HR department um, with the transitions that have happened, with the bridges that are being built between the two departments. That hasn't always been the case where communication has been in place. Uh, there is an expectation that that will, that will not only continue but will grow and we will be a strong team together, not just the HR team, but the finance and HR team together, as well as the entire organization, which helps support the city. Any ad additional questions? We also have Rianne Beaudry from USI on the line, if anybody has questions when it comes to that, to the healthcare side of it. Again, we are looking out for you know, best practices and we are looking to take care of our internal service as well as our external service. So it's very important. And one of the things that the uh, Human Resource Department believes in, if, as you saw in, the, uh, in um, the new mission statement for the HR team, is that you know, they, they, took, they look at things very, very, very high and it's very important to be trusted and to be a you know the service provider for our for our team. So any additional questions? Otherwise, we'll let everybody that's online. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Rayanne. Before we sign off online, I do have a couple. I just want to make sure nobody else does. Yep. Well, first I want to thank both you, Todd and Vicky, for seeing that thread that was hanging and deciding to pull it and see what happens instead of just pretending like you never saw it and moving on and also not heading for the hills once you did see what was behind it. Uh, and especially for looping us as the committee and the council and by extension the public in right away. Uh, the transparency is much appreciated. Uh, one thing that I saw repeated through the report a lot mentioned the contract with Fidelity as well as UMR and some employees having UHC coverage. Yes. Would you be able to explain a little more what that was about? So um, we, the city had gone with American Fidelity in 2019 uh, to provide open enrollment uh, services in exchange to, for those services, uh, American Fidelity would then be allowed to uh, sell their own uh, ancillary products, which could be cancer coverage or short-term and long-term disability. In 2019, uh, there was a decision to continue with the standard as our short-term disability carrier. And uh, in 2020, American Fidelity wanted to go and have those products as well. So we had spent with American Fidelity for two years. The first year, we did not take all of their coverages. The second year in 2020, we took their entire package. And for that, that was an exchange that they would perform the duties of doing the open enrollment where they would meet with each employee um, to, to go through their insurance benefits packages. Uh, through the course of discovery, when we were uh, looking at uh, the premiums that were coming out of employees' uh, paychecks, and we were looking at the census from American Fidelity. What we did not find, we had some confusion about, we were seeing deductions made that were not matching to American Fidelity's census, and that caused us some great concern. What we discovered through that process was that there was an alternate insurance vendor, UHC, that had been um, kept on board, and some of those products were being sold uh, as, uh, as additional products and or carried forward. I did not understand or did not know that at the time. And so we thought as a team that all of those were 
under the umbrella of American Fidelity. And it was through our investigation that we discovered that that was not the case. So there was a separate group that was selling separate products. Okay, thank you. That's all the person for Ella. Did you have another question? Okay. And any other questions from the committee? Comments? Great, well thank you everybody for um, for letting us present this information. I know that um, many of you, just because it is obviously a, a hot topic in the community, you'll have questions to, that'll come to you. So if you do have additional questions in the future, please feel free to reach out to, to Vicki and myself and we'll do our due diligence to keep you guys updated. We will continue on a quarterly manner to bring, you, to bring the team up to date as we continue to make improvements and changes throughout the city um, specifically in regards to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have this listed as discussion and possible action. Would our action just be moving this on to the council? It, it can be, you, you, or you can take, take no action or you can uh, move to file or refer back to council, however you want to do it. I would have given this an initial procedure to vote. I would have liked to let Dean know first, but would anybody like to make a motion that we recommend sending this to the Committee of the Whole? All right, we have a motion and a second. Can all those in, well, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Last up, we have 5.1, just noting our next meeting date is May 24th, 2021. Does anybody know of any scheduling conflicts? We'll take silence as no. In that case, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. All opposed? Seeing none, the ayes have it. Motion passes and we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.